gradually rising prices of impaired imported natural gas. An almost outdated nuclear power plant. Ladies and gentlemen, Armenia is in the danger of facing energy and economic crisis. But I believe that with the right mindset and the right visions, we can tackle those problems. I remember when I just started my studies in the Technical University of Denmark, I was attending a course of physics together with many deans and foreigners. And as a part of the course, I gave a talk about Armenia. I was going through the energy reserves of the country, and as soon as I mentioned that 30% of the uh, electricity in Armenia is provided by local hydropower, a wave of laws went through the audience. Back then, I couldn't understand this reaction. But then, with the time, I started seeing all these global problems of fossil fuel depletion, this global warming, all these conflicts around the oil. I also understood that the reason all these advanced economies are heavily investing in renewable energy, such as hydropower, solar energy, wind energy, and others, is because the renewables are going to be the sustainable, affordable, and clean energy resources of the future. That day in the classroom, people already knew that. Armenia. So 30% of the energy in Armenia is provided by local hydropower plants. And this is a really good number. But then 30 to 40% is provided by nuclear power plant. And it will, it will exhaust its lifetime in a few years. And actually the government is thinking to invest a lot to build a new one. Another 30 to 40% is provided by thermal power plants that are running on imported natural gas. And if you look at the pro by the way, I'm, I'm a scientist, so my duty is to show you some diagrams and perhaps some various people. So, and if this works, I will show you the curve. So if you look at the prices of the gas today, it's almost three times more than in 2005. And I'm pretty sure this will not stay here. However, Armenia has many other important problems, such as poverty, unemployment, immigration, economic crisis. So the energy problem kind of fades into the background of all the other problems. But what I believe that by addressing the energy issue through renewables, will not only solve the energy problem in the country, but will significantly contribute in solving the other problems as well. Let's do an activity together right now. Imagine for a second that 100% of the country's electricity is provided by local renewables. Independence from the imported natural gas. You don't have to worry about this increasing prices. Instead of, instead of importing the fossils from outside, the country produces its own energy. That's a lot of new jobs created for the locals. Imagine the huge relief on the economy. The, the country does not have to pay for the gas and all this extra money can now spend, be spent on solving the other problems. So this is a really good image, right? But this is not it. No nuclear power plants built in the seismic region. No deforestation, clean, healthy environment. Tourism grows. Who wouldn't want to come to visit a country with such a healthy environment? So Armenia actually gradually would become a country, not with a high rate of immigration, but a country where people want to come and stay. If you ask an expert, so if the renewables are so great, why it has not been implemented so far in, in the country, they'll probably tell you that, well, the renewables are still too expensive and underdeveloped. And they're right. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you know what was the price of the first IBM computer aimed for office work, $55,000. And I don't think any of you today would like actually one like this one in your office, right? Today, almost every house has a PC with computers costing only 1% of that price. And now is the time for renewables. And I assure you that there are plenty of stakeholders all over the world that are ready to invest in 
research and development of renewables. And this is a great opportunity for Armenia and many other countries like Armenia if they start acting today. You know, many people might think that Armenia does not have the capacity right now for it. But let me tell you a story. Recently I joined an NGO called Amstrad that works towards developing collaborations between Scandinavia and Armenia. And this was a great opportunity for me because I learned a lot of important and interesting things about the two regions. And one particular thing that struck me was that when one evening I was going through some statistics about Armenia, I came across this Global Innovation Index. This is an index that recognizes innovation as a driver for economic growth. And it essentially includes many parameters about the country, like infrastructure, public institutions, number of knowledge workers, freedom of speech, even statistics about how many people use YouTube in the country. And today many business leaders all over the world use that statistics, that index, to assess the environment of the country for possible business collaborations. So I looked up Armenia in the list and I started comparing it with neighboring countries and I discovered that Armenia is not only ahead of Georgia and Azerbaijan, but also Iran, Russia and Turkey. And I was quite surprised that the country with half isolated borders and uh, limited access to the external market is ahead of those countries. And the, and the factors that put Armenia in front, um, among many others, education, scientific publications, even in the, even the efficiency index, that innovation efficiency index that, that represents the fact that Armenians are really good at producing more with less. This is the reason that I believe that Armenia has that knowledge capacity today. We just need to start acting. And what I believe Armenia is lacking right now is vision and the belief. A vision of 100% renewable country and the belief that Armenia can reach it. Vision is an interesting word, by the way. And I, I checked it out in the dictionary, and one of the explanations was intelligent foresight. A competence of being able to see how something could or should be combined with the ability to make it so. I consider myself a lucky guy because throughout my career I actually experienced the power of the vision. Let me tell you my story. Seven years ago I joined a research group that deals with solar energy and by the way it's just interesting for me how many of you have seen or heard about solar cells before. Please raise your hands. Almost, almost everyone in the room. Now keep your hands up if you have seen or heard about organic solar cells and know what it is. Okay, very few. Well, you don't really know about, hear about organic solar cells because they are not in the market yet. Today, 85% of the solar energy market is based on silicon solar cells, and silicon is quite an expensive material. Organic solar cells belong to the new generation of solar cells that focus on finding cheaper types of materials and finding cheaper ways of producing the technology. And the word organic stands for the fact that organic solar cells are made from organic polymers. You interact with the polymers on a daily basis. It's, it's the food packaging plastic, it's the tires of your car, it's the chewing gum, Polymers can also be in liquid forms and can have this property of converting the light into electricity. So to produce a polymer or organic solar cell, you need to take that polymer, sandwich it between two electrodes, then you take it on the sun and you get electricity out. And the benefits of those organic solar cells are that they can be flexible, lightweight, have a variety of colors, but the most important thing is that they can be cheap very cheap because they, are, they can be made out of very cheap materials and because they can be made very cheap, easy and fast ways. So the group I joined was specialized in working in the field of organic solar cells. 
And seven years ago, this was the type of samples that we were producing. This is a small solar cell that is made on a glass substrate. And I spent almost two days in the chemistry lab doing all sorts of coating techniques, operations in the vacuum chambers, and eventually I got this sample. I took it out on the sun, I tested it, it worked. I waited 30 minutes, I tested it, it didn't work anymore, it degraded. I was so frustrated. And, and I was kind of, you know, it wasn't clear for me where we're going with this, because, you know, it was so far from all these advantages that we're talking about, about this technology. What I could not see back then was that there was a vision to create a product with a future, and our team believed in that vision. With time, I started seeing the results of that vision. We started using plastics instead of glass to make it flexible. The sample size started growing. We started encapsulating them to make them more stable. And then we started making gadgets to test the technology and the applications. And today we're producing, sorry, went the wrong way. Yep. So we're producing all sorts of applications. I actually brought some with me here. Let me show you. We have this solar hat that has a solar cell on top and has a radio integrated inside. This was tested at a festival in Denmark. Uh, we actually Produced also laser pointers integrate, with integrated solar cell, and I think it works pretty well. We also had a solar lamp, you also see it in the picture there. Um, this was sent to Ghana for a field test as part of the project of the World Bank Lighting Africa. We connected, it actually works as well, and, um, and many other applications. And today, we are at the stage when we produce a sample that is flexible, lightweight, pretty stable. But what is more, the most important is that it is very fast to produce. Such a sample is produced in three seconds. And I will tell you how. I think you all know how the newspapers are being printed using all this raw through machinery. The same concept is here. If you look at the screen, this is how solar cells are being produced in our laboratory today. This is a rotor machinery and a long stripe of plastics goes through the machine and different layers of polymers and electrodes are being printed on top of each other and essentially at the end you get many samples in a very short time and by reducing the time and the energy spent on the production, you drastically reduce the price of the technology. Such samples are fun to work with and very important to bring awareness in the society and to promote the solar energy. By the way, Edward will actually distribute to some of you. Unfortunately, I don't have too many samples here today, some of such samples. But you also can actually order through the uh, website plasticphotovoltaics.org. You can order free of charge such a sample. And I will be actually happy to hear that you used it to promote solar energy again. So, so gadgets are quite hot. <laughs> so the gadgets are quite fun and important, but they are not solving the energy issue. That's why we went from gadgets to manufacturing solar cells for energy production. And if you look at the screen again, this is the first organic solar cell power plant of its kind built next to our laboratory. We call it Solar Park. And you see in the video how the last stripe of polymer solar cells, organic solar cells, is being printed down or taped down on the platform. And soon this will be connected to the grid to test for energy production. Are we trying to use just cheap materials and cheap, cheap ways of installations to keep the cost down? So, within seven years, we went from this to what you saw now. And this is 
because a man with a vision, that man was his, our group leader, Frederick Krebs, who not only believed in that vision, but he also encouraged our entire team to believe in it. And I will let you be the judge if it was worth it. Of course, organics also still have too many problems to solve, but if you ask me today, I know the future of this technology. And there are many other solar cell technologies emerging almost every day, and I'm pretty sure that the full utilization of solar energy is just around the corner. And the reason that I believe solar energy has to be one of the first choices for solving the energy issue is because if you look at the screen, this is the potential of all the energy reserves on Earth, expressed in the forms of planets with different colors. And on the right side, the column, represents the total capacity of the fossils on Earth, while the rest are the renewable energy reserves per year in terawatts. And if you compare the solar energy, the big one, it's actually more than all the other energy reserves combined. The very left one, the white one there, is the current electricity used by the entire world. So if you even harvest a very small fraction of solar energy, it can actually cover the entire land of the world. Let's back, get back to Armenia. Armenia is quite lucky with sun. Armenia has six times less cloudy days than Denmark, and twice as much energy from sun than compared to Europe's average, almost twice. So if Nordic countries in Europe can cover a significant part of their electricity needs today, then harvesting of solar energy in Armenia or other countries like Armenia itself is a must. What I'm trying to, co to communicate today to you is that there's this great potential of renewable energy in the country, and there's this knowledge potential, knowledge capacity in the country. That's why we need to start acting today. And that's why I suggest that with the vision of 100% renewables, we start a movement in Armenia today. Let's spread the word about renewables and solar energy. Let's start educating these kids in the school, the students in the universities about the renewables. Let's start collaborating with the rainy countries and offering some testing stages here to test their technologies in here on the sun. Let's use that knowledge capacity in the country and build a technology that can conquer the world's markets. It is time to grab the wheel and instead of being a follower, and waiting until someone else will come up with the technology that can be used, let's prove the world that Armenia can do it. That Armenia can be a leader and Armenia can become 100% renewable. And you will start noticing that the closer you get to the vision, the better life becomes in Armenia. Thank you very much.